Welcome everybody back here again to the basement. Today in studio we have Dizzy Bats. Hello. What's going on, guys? How you doing? I'm well. doing all right. <laughs> and Dizzy Bats today, driving all the way from New Jersey uh, to be with us here today. Um, and this is the first day of your guys' tour that you guys kicked off, right? Yeah, uh, we have seven shows total, and this is uh, tonight will be show number one of seven. All right, tonight at Thrill Street. Yes. Yeah, so Thrill Street's an awesome place. You guys are going to like it there. A um, little cramped, but uh, that's what makes it awesome, because you're going to have people in your face the whole time. Yes. So uh, I'm sure you, got, you guys have played Thrill Street before. Yeah, this yeah. will be our third time at the Thrill. All right. Well, um, you know, I wish you guys best of luck at that show. Uh, I would love to be there, but unfortunately, I have a show myself um, tonight. So, and I actually just got back from New York last night, so I was out your guys' way, um, believe it or not, last night. And I am feeling it because I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running on like three hours of sleep. So, um, but we got this studio session running right now, and I'm excited to hear you guys' music. Uh, you guys were warming up a little bit earlier today, and what I would, what I was hearing was awesome. It was tight. It was, it was, uh, it was well played. Um, and You're building it up way too much. <laughs> Well, say what you will. Just kidding. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> say what you will. I know when I hear something good. So at least to me, no, I know. We appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> well, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hand it right over to you. We're going to go through your first song. I'll ask you guys some questions and we're going to have a good time. Is there a world where you might like me? Is there a life where you're not a dirty dream? I know that we just met and you're pretending. Bats live here in studio at the basement. Man, you guys, just as I said earlier, <laughs> just as I said, and you tried to downplay it. Come on. Always. Well, I'll tell you, 
Um, I'm interested to know. So, Connor, you are the founding member of the band, and you've written all of these songs, correct? That is correct. So, With help from others. But, um, yeah, the skeletons are mine. So, uh, as, I guess, I, it's not like a solo artist. Well, a solo artist, but as a touring act, finding uh, individuals to help you along your journey, how... How does that translate to finding new ideas and getting to know different people for different tours and seeing how they do things and what they throw into the mix? How does that work for you? Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I think what's really cool is through doing this project, I've gotten to meet um, so many different musicians who yeah, come from different backgrounds. Um, and I think uh, from a musical standpoint, maybe there's not um, a ton in the way of like, um, co-writing or, or workshopping when we're on the road. But um, I think just meeting people who come from different backgrounds is definitely something that's uh, inspiring to me. And I think I've learned um, a lot from, you know, the mus musicians that I've been able to tour with. Um, so I don't know if there's uh, anything that's, like, deliberate or intentional, but I think just through meeting a lot of people, you know, you, you're inspired. Yeah, totally. Um, I know for me, every project that I've ever been a part of, um, I've – kind of been the primary source of creativity with writing and orchestration and trying to make things work. Um, so it, it can be a challenge, but at the end of the day, it also, it's a good feeling to know that like you have a direct hand in the direction something is going, which is awesome. And having the help of other, other dedicated individuals really does increase that productivity, um, from a touring level anyways, tenfold. So yeah. And, uh, you know, from what I can hear, these guys have definitely done their homework. <laughs> so. Yeah. And um, I'm very strict. So just out of curiosity, where did you meet meet these guys online, obviously? And sort of. Um, I mean, I think through uh, just the uh, touring musician network, um, you know, I was able to meet everyone. Um, but I mean, Paul, uh, me and Paul did a tour together out West, um, when Paul was with his, uh, band at the time, Matt Jaffe and the Distractions, we did a West Coast tour. So I met Paul then and he moved back East. Uh, so we reconnected. Um, I met Zach, uh, through a friend. Um, and I met, uh, Nick yesterday because, you know, they're related, Paul and Nick. Yeah, um, you were, they were saying a little bit earlier today about the, the brothers over here. Nick yeah, and brothers Paul. Paul Dino. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, and you guys are actual brothers. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Like, when, when did you guys get into this game? Do you always come as, like, a tour package? You know, like a related yeah. tour package? Yeah, it's a contract deal. You can't get one without the other. <laughs> you guys should definitely have that as a as a marketing strategy. Like, hey, we're a, we're a complete package deal here. Like, you need one. and You can't just have one or the other. You need both. It's beautiful. You can charge more for that, too. <laughs> we charge less, actually, when it's <laughs> Well, that's actually pretty cool that uh, you have some brothers... Um, on the team here that's that's awesome and uh the drummer sitting back there zach that's my brother's name actually now we're talking about brothers and stuff and anyways <laughs> so zach um you got involved in this how exactly uh so me and connor have a couple of mutual friends uh particularly matt and john who play in a band such gold so i think uh he reached out to them and they couldn't do it and they recommended me and that's kind of how our, our paths crossed Oh, okay. Just awesome. classic referral system. Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, the other thing I guess I might as well add while we're down here, um, here at the basement we are in, and I've said this before multiple times, we're in an actual basement. Um, so being in an actual fucking basement means that we're going to have things like my uh, AC and my heater kick on every once in a while. But I think it just adds to the whole like underground punk scene type of aesthetic. So... Um, don't like be alarmed if you hear that thing kick on and be like, oh no, what's going on? <laughs> and every once in a while, like if my roommates are home, like a toilet will flush or something like that. It's great. It's awesome. <laughs> Someday I will actually move into a legitimate studio, like an actual space with a good facility and stuff. But until then, we're down here doing this, and I think it's still pretty cool. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it right back over to you guys. We're going to go ahead and get um, running into your next song. Um, I'm, man, I, you know, I get acts come through. I think you guys are the second, or no, you're the third full band with drummer that we've had down here in the studio. 
and um, you know each time it's always just impressive to see what people are doing out there in the music scenes and after this next song we'll talk a little bit about the roots um, you know where you guys came from how you got involved in the music um, and after the song after that I think what we'll probably do is just go right into the future where do you guys see it going so go ahead through these next couple songs kind of think about those sorts of things because I will be asking lots of questions so with that I'm gonna hand it right back over to you the song is called East End Dizzy Bats live here in studio at the basement. Second song, awesome. First song, awesome. So excited to hear what you guys have next. Before we get into that though, we're gonna kick it back to the roots. You guys and your music, um, and well, Connor, I guess you and your music uh, played by these guys sounds really good. I'm, I'm enjoying every bit of this um, because it's always awesome to have great touring bands come into your studio and play. 
uh, be able to capture that sound as well is also pretty awesome. I, I enjoy these types of things as an audio engineer, but what I also enjoy listening to is the roots. How did you get into music? Where did it all start for you? What was the, the pinnacle moments in your either childhood or early adult years that kind of made you sit down and think, I want to be a musician? Where did that start for you? Um, should I start? Go ahead, yeah. Okay, I guess I'll start. Um, both my parents are musicians, um, so I think growing up, just being around music, um, you know, there was no escaping it. Uh, and, you know, from five years old, I uh, was playing piano, eventually made the transition to trumpet, picked up a guitar when I was like 10. Um, I don't think I ever wanted to be a musician. In fact, I think I actively fought against doing it just internally. Um, but I think it got to a point where, uh, you know, it, it almost didn't feel like a choice. You know, this was something I had to pursue, it was something I needed to make happen. Um, so uh, after college, I made the decision to devote, you know, the majority of my time to this project. Um, so it's been, yeah, I mean, it, this, this particular project started seven years ago now, um, and we're still going. You know, it's interesting you bring up the college thing. Um, I feel like a lot of musicians, um, not all, but a lot, start out in the college years. They're trying to figure out what they want to do, where they want to be. And honestly, a lot of them kind of view music at first as like a hobby. And it's like, uh, you know, you, the, the overall... The overall consensus from everybody, as it seems to be nowadays, is that you can't make money doing music. And everyone's like, oh, you know, being a musician is a dead end, blah, blah, blah. You have to go to college and get a good six-figure job and, you know, bullshit like that. And when it comes down to it, you know, sometimes it's not about the money. It's not even about, like, you know, doing what people expect you to do. It's about doing what you want to do. Um, and for a lot of musicians out there, it just takes that conscious decision of sitting down and being like, I don't, I don't want to work at a desk. I don't, I don't want to go and be uh, uh, this, that, or the other. I want to play music, and I feel like I have a good shot at it. Did you ever have that moment where you sat down and doubted yourself or even thought, like, I don't know if I can make this work, and then just said, no, screw it, I'm doing it. Did that ever happen to you or no? Um, I think there were a couple times on tour where I... Uh, you know, I had these really long drives, uh, eight or nine hours, and then, uh, you know, especially in the beginning, I was touring solo a lot, solo acoustic, and, you know, driving eight hours and then playing to two or three people, and I remember one time I was driving from Rhode Island to D.C., this was like 2013, and uh, that's a really long drive. I don't know how long, but it's really long. And uh, just back-to-back -back not great shows in terms of turnout. And that that moment was very real for me where I had this, uh, I don't know, moment of second-guessing, I guess. Honestly, other than that, um, there haven't been too many times where I've, you know, uh, doubted any of this. Um, for me, it's just been, like, really fun. And I try not to think about the other noise, you know, the six-figure stuff. I think if I listened to things like that, you know, I would probably not be doing it. Um, so I don't know. I think it's always just been really fun. And so as long as it's still fun, I'm, you know, going to keep doing it. I guess the overall point I'm trying to make is that it's not, it's not about what they try and tell you in like college and school and stuff. It's, and it, when it comes down to it, life is what you make of it. And yeah. this is what life is. Sometimes it's about going out, being creative, doing the long drives, you know, <laughs> spending the long nights on the road and then playing awesome shows. And, uh, you know, it's it, it, touring. It seems like people who aren't musicians or don't do touring, all they ever see is the good moments on like, you know, <laughs> YouTube and stuff. And it's one of those things where they don't see the behind the scenes stuff. They don't see all the work that goes into it and all the traveling and the long hours and the fights and everything else that goes behind it. But then they also um, don't understand that 10 years from now, when you look back at it all, and uh, if you're still doing this, if you move on to other things, no matter what you're doing, you look back at this and all you're going to remember is the good times and how much fun you had. And even the bad times, you're going to laugh about them. You're going to be like, you know, that sucked when I was there, but it was awesome. <laughs> so 
Um, I believe that full heartedly. I think that you guys are going places, um, which is why we have you down here today. Um, and I guess before we get started with the next song, uh, just a quick question. I guess I'll ask all of you, what is the music scene like? Uh, Connor, I guess for you in New Jersey, correct? Yeah, I mean, uh, the band has always kind of been based out of New York City, actually. So that scene is we're more familiar with. Um, but certainly we've played Jersey a bunch as well. How is New York scene? I think it's great. Um, I think New York is kind of what you make of it. Um, and I will say that, like, I'm very fortunate because I have a lot of friends and family in New York. So there's uh, already this, like, built-in fan base. Um, you know, I realize that people coming from other places trying to get their start in New York, that's definitely going to be tougher. Um, so I, I think over the years we've... Uh, met a lot of cool bands, a lot of cool musicians, people doing music that we've been able to create this awesome um, network. Um, and over the years, we've started to like help each other out and play in each other's bands and play on the same shows. And I think you can kind of build a lot of sub scenes um, in New York. Um, the scene as a whole, I, I can imagine would seem daunting to anyone. Um, but well, New know, York is such a big place too. Right. Right. And there's a lot going on. We were just driving through there last night, actually. I played a show at the Nutty Irishman in Long Island. And driving through, you know, the Bronx and Brooklyn and uh, seeing Manhattan off the bridge and stuff, being able to see all that and all of the – just even all the roadways, all of the, the logistics and stuff that happen on a daily basis there – was mind boggling. <laughs> and to think that, you know, there's hidden places all throughout New York City in all five, there's five, right? Five districts <laughs> or whatever. Uh, be, just knowing that there's that much stuff happening in all of those areas and like trying to wrap your head around what's going on where. Like, I don't know how I would be able to move to a place like New York City and find these underground places and try and like make my way to uh, starting something out there. Um, but then again, I thought the same thing here in state college and here I am today. I, I know most of the major places and, you know, I feel like I'm doing pretty well in this, in this town. So that's awesome though. New York city, big place, um, big dreams there as well. And, uh, um, I hope you guys really do get into some cool places up there in New York and hopefully you already have and will, um, here in the near future. Um, and Paul, I wanted to ask you, uh, I guess you can answer for you and Nick as well, cause you guys are brothers. Um, <laughs> The uh, music scene where you are from and how you got involved, um, might as well give you a chance to answer, too. Yeah, sure. Well, so Nick and I are from the Bronx. We're born and bred in New York City. Um, the Bronx itself really, so a lot of what Connor said applies to us. Um, the Bronx itself doesn't have too much of a music scene at the moment. There was, I mean, it's the birthplace of hip-hop, so it's got that going for it. There was a pretty well-known scene called the Bronx Underground there, which was like a big kind of post-hardcore metal scene oh, but the it's kind of died down and um i mean new york is definitely a tough market and i think its two biggest problems are probably and i might be talking out of my ass to some extent but <laughs> i think the biggest problems are oversaturation because it's the largest city and there's so much to do and the other uh problem i think is nostalgia you know people would look at something like cbgb's and they want to continue going to shows there it's obviously closed down now but you know, we've hang we're hanging on to these ideas that the places that were hip 30, 40 years ago are still hip and we're not a lot of people aren't accepting that it's time to move on and find the new scenes and the new hip places to be in. While I'm personally not that familiar with them, I know that they're out there. There's a lot more underground stuff and I think that's where the heart of the scene lies. Well, some of the biggest things you can do as a musician in your area is to create those scenes. Yeah. Uh, which is what I try and do here with the basement sessions. As far as I know, nobody in state college has ever done live studio sessions in this way before. Uh, they've done like 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 studio sessions or artist sessions where like they set up a video camera, someone plays, and but, but I don't think I've ever seen like uh, to this extent um, a production in someone's basement before. <laughs> so I'm trying to do stuff like this to make it make it cool and. And hopefully other people catch on. You know, I'm hoping that younger students get involved in stuff like this here in State College because um, you guys are fronting the musician side. I'm fronting the capturing a, music a musician's sound, um, which is what I'm really trying to do here. And I guess that's kind of becoming a, a not a lost art, but something that more and more people are getting involved in but just don't know enough about because there's so many avenues um, nowadays to get involved. I mean, you can buy... 
If you have a MacBook, you can buy Reaper for $60 and you can download whatever VST you want and create recordings that are comparable to multi-million dollar studios back in, you know, the 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that there's definitely some uh, some avenues for younger musicians um, and even younger people who may not like want to play as much but want to capture audio and do audio engineering more. I think there's definitely avenues for that. Um, but I'm going to stop rambling on here and I'm going to hand it right back over to you guys for the next song. Um, so go ahead and take it away. This song is off of our first record ever and was our first single ever. It's called Please Stall. If I bleed instead of ringtone Oh, I feel this deafening shake of the phone Dizzy Bats live in studio at the basement. You guys are killing it right now. I love it. Um, if I didn't have a show tonight, I would come see you guys at Thrill Street just so I could get a second taste. Um, and honestly, I want to hear more. But unfortunately, we have to keep it down to four songs because <laughs> post-editing is a bitch. And I'm going to cut that out. Post-editing sucks. <laughs> and <laughs> it's it's one of those things where if there's too much time and there's too much, like, yeah, I, I just don't want to deal with it. Um, plus, being a full-time college student, there's that too. Um, but anyways, rolling right into things, uh, you guys have, we've talked about just a little bit about you guys, uh, where you're from, uh, what you're doing in the music scene, uh, how the music scene is at this time, um, your upbringing, we went to the roots a little bit, talked about that. Um, what's going to happen in the future? Where are you guys, where are you guys headed? Uh, I guess more importantly, um, or more relevant, Connor, where do you see things heading? And um, where where would you like this to end up? Uh, have you ever like sat down and thought about that, or had that internal monologue with yourself? Yeah, I definitely I definitely have. Um, I think that's changed over the years. Um, honestly, I feel like I've experienced like a lot of uh, cool stuff 
over the years, like being able to tour, um, you know, both throughout the country as well as uh, other countries. Um, for me, I just want to keep making music and, uh, you know, in terms of like, I guess, concrete goals, one thing I want to do is work towards um, a third full length record. Um, so that's what I have, uh, what I'm, you know, uh, working towards. And then uh, in terms of touring, I definitely want to do Europe. Um, uh, ideally as a full band. Um, uh, I was in China earlier this year and uh, definitely trying to go back there because that was um, a really good time. Um, so yeah, in terms of touring, uh, definitely want to uh, travel and uh, see some other countries. That's awesome. You know, I've never toured um, in Europe, but I have been into, uh, God, I have been to Europe. Uh, I lived there for two years. I lived in Germany. And, you know, the music scene out there, it's surprisingly easy to to get into um comparatively speaking you would think that something like that is untouchable but it's really not um you know i know when i was over there american bands it wouldn't matter what kind of band you were or it wouldn't matter your level of of like where you're at as a musician you could be just starting out and you're still you still have some things to learn or you could be a total professional they don't care um you know if, if to have an american band in Germany was like, oh my God, we have to be there. <laughs> so um, if you uh, if you do ever end up over there, you're gonna love it. My first show that I ever went to in Germany actually was um, in Cologne, uh, or Köln as they call it. And it was Real Friends um, was headlining, Modern Baseball and You Blew It were there. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was my first show in Germany. And it was actually pretty cool. It was my first time seeing Modern Baseball too. Um, I had no idea they were going to get big um, at that point because this is back in 2013. Yeah, 2013. Uh, so they were just, they were still on the climb, but, you know, they were known. Uh, so that was definitely a cool experience. But hey, who knows? Maybe uh, someday in the future, you know, some someone over in, Germ in Germany is going to read a little poster, a headline, be like, who's Dizzy Bats? <laughs> they're going to come look at, they're going to come watch you guys be like, yo. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I guess that's kind of the long term then. What about some short term future plans? Uh, anything that you can share with us or? Yeah. Um, I mean, we're trying to get through this tour. That's like the first goal. <laughs> um, what are the big stops on that tour, by the way? Uh, so doing Detroit, I guess that's considered a big stop. I don't know. I, I think they're all big stops. That's um, the toilet that I was talking about nice, earlier. Nice. <laughs> Uh, after the, tomorrow, we're in um, Elyria, Ohio. Then we have a couple Michigan shows. Then we're back in Ohio uh, to Columbus, Ohio. And then we're in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And then Falston, Maryland. And then we're home. Nice. So you're kind of making a big this way type A little deal. bit of a this way, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, for, I guess for everybody watching, it would be this way. It's kind of like that upper... I guess that's what they call the tour belt. Because, um, like... There's a belt stretching from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia mm -hmm. up towards um, uh, Chicago, mm -hmm. and that's like the that's like the zone, I guess. It's a great zone. Yeah. So, well, that's awesome. Um, your guys' tour sounds like so much fun. I I wish that I could just like you know follow along with a cam <laughs> camera and document the whole thing, but. That would be pretty cool to do. Maybe I should think about that as a business venture. Hey, float me 200 bucks and I'll follow you on tour and take video. There you go. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but yeah, awesome to hear about that. Some long-term plans. Definitely cool to hear. Um, I wish you guys the best of luck in all of that. Thank you. Um, and uh, I'm going to hand it back over for your last song. I'm extremely excited. I know you guys have a show to head to, and we're going to try and get you out of here in the next 20 minutes. But um I am excited to hear this last. What's this last one called? Scared. It's uh, it's off our newest EP, actually. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm gonna hand it right over to you. Go ahead and take it away.
Dizzy Bats live in studio at the basement. You guys killed it. Killed it. It was awesome hearing all of those songs, all four of them. I can't wait to go back and hear them again. Um, and again and again and again, as you can do on YouTube, um, to the basement YouTube page and our Facebook page, should you wish. Um, I don't see why you wouldn't. You guys are phenomenal. Thank you so much for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Guys you. Are yeah, thank awesome. You for um, you guys have a show to head to over at Thrill Street, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys out of here. Um, not that you couldn't just leave if you wanted to, but <laughs> thanks again so much for coming in. Um, I really appreciate it. You guys were awesome. I'm going to clap by myself <laughs> and act like a huge audience. <laughs> but um, yeah, hopefully you know, someday in the future we run into each other again. You guys are through State College a lot, so... I hope someday, you know, I'll be able to go to a show or something and be like, hey, <laughs> and you guys are all like, hey, and it'd be good. <laughs> so awesome. Thank you guys again so much. And with that, until next time.